I thank every single person for taking the time and trouble for coming here this evening. Really appreciate it. Just to introduce myself, I'm Michael Bagram. Um, I'm helping Professor Carabas from the sort of Cape Town side. I'm not his attorney appearing in the courts in Abu Dhabi. I'm not allowed to. Um, what we're hoping to do this evening is to get some messages that we could send through to him so that at least he can see some of his patients, wishing him luck and also wishing him a safe journey home. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Taryn. The short version of my story in the nuts and bolts is that I had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma when I was three. Um, we were lucky enough to meet Dr. Carabas. I went through treatment with him. As you can see, I'm fine. That's my little boy over there. Um, I think each of us, as Michael has said, each of us does have a story. Yes, there are children that die, um, but I know that he gave me the same treatment as anybody else. This was a great idea to get us together tonight, so thank you very much for that. Just in terms of the statistics, we're told that the statistics are that Professor Carabas had brought down the mortality rate from 80% in his department to 19%, uh, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm Bradley Rayner. I've got severe hemophilia. Uh, Carabas, or Dr. Carabas, uh, um, diagnosed me at the age of three, uh, three months, uh, that is. And I've known Carabas basically all my life, 48 years now. Carabas taught, taught or treated me and taught me how to manage my condition, probably to the age of 16, where I was forced to then obviously go to Grutuskir. This is a guy that is extremely... Um, you know, rigid in terms of the protocol and the way that he actually treats his patients. Um, and, and we testimony to that, how youngsters um, that's still at primary school, which we were, uh, can treat ourselves, you know, and take ownership of our condition and live pretty much um, a, a normal life. And we ask the prof, we give him a good message, we say, prof, you're going to come home, our hearts go out to you, but, um, you know, we can't wait uh, to get you back to South Africa. It's my son Graham, he's a hemophiliac, and um, also he was three years old when he was diagnosed. And what I want to say about Dr. Carabas, I was an unmarried mother. He, the taxi, he, he organized that the taxi come and pick us up in the morning. We go home 11 o'clock, we come back uh, four o'clock and we go home seven o'clock. That is the kind of man Dr. Carabas was. He made our life easier. It can be what time of the night Dr. Carabas comes and they come and see Graham in the hospital, in the ward, and he stays there with Graham. No, he's a fantastic man, really, really. And my heart is going out for him. My church is praying, we're all praying that, and only God can do this, you know, because we serve a miracle working God. Hi, my name is Jill McCulloch. <coughs> Sorry, my son Patrick, who's standing at the back and a little too shy to come forward, <laughs> was 19 months old when he was diagnosed. <laughs> um, right. With a neuroblastoma. And we were given a 10% prognosis. And Dr. Mm. Carabas was like a substitute granddad and father. He Never, I mean, he comforted so many patients, yet he had time, all the time, for every single patient, and he had time to console you, I'm sorry, and to actually reassure you that everything was going to be okay. And yes, unfortunately, with some patients, it wasn't okay, mm. but that is because of the nature of the disease. It has got nothing to do with what Prof Carabas did or didn't do. And I have my son today because of Prof Carabas and his team. He got the National Cancer Association Award in 1995 in front of the World Cup rugby team. He had the song, He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother, dedicated to him and his sister for by the Hollies when they were here performing and we were their VIP guests. And it's all thanks to Prof Carabas and his team. And I mean, what can you do? What can you give back except pray that he's gonna come home and continue doing the work he's doing and having a rest and knowing how much he's changed people's lives. And I can never, ever thank him enough for what he gave us, ever. To Prof Carabas, well, I've got an 18-year-old daughter who was diagnosed by Prof when she was four months with a hepatoblastoma, and he treated her until she was, well, she, I finally begged him to discharge us, please, as an outpatient when she was five. But Prof has just 
Like everybody said, he was always there. He explained all the drugs to me because I've got a medical background myself, so he would explain because he knew I wanted to know everything about every drip and every drug and every pill. I can't, I can't say enough about Prof. I mean, he's just everything. I mean, he gave me my... Told you I was too well. Um, gave me my daughter and saved her life. And, And she's just walked away with um, a straight A aggregate metric. Everybody. Um, my name is Gordon Scott. Um, I'm 39 years old. About 30 years ago, I was uh, diagnosed with a neuroblastoma. The prognosis at that time was very, very poor, and there wasn't any treatment protocols for me. Um, and I know that uh, Dr. Carabas at that time contacted St. Jude's Hospital in America, a patient who had the same diagnosis as me, but had fortunately passed away. He successfully um, adapted that protocol so that I could be treated, and I survived. I know that he treated me successfully because I am here today um, and I am eternally grateful for him, for, for everything he did for me. Hi, I'm Jan Glazewski, I'm a hemophiliac and my first recollections of Cyril, I call him Cyril now, was his immense um, involvement not only in the care, the actual medical care of the patients, but in their, in their lives. It was Cyril who drove and educated nurses uh, in collaboration with the World Haemophilia Foundation to get haemophilia care to every corner of the country. So we, we, we have a, 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 a hell of a lot to thank him for, not only for the actual physical care, but the whole administrative structures for haemophilia care in the country. Now, what Michael perhaps didn't emphasize enough was that to be tried in absentia without him being noticed and found guilty is contrary to the basic tenets of justice worldwide. Well, I'm from a different aspect. I'm Dr. Melody Hogarth. And in the um, early 1970s, I was privileged to spend a year with Professor Caribus. And I was more than touched this evening to see some of the patients that I looked after in those days. And in fact, Graham Reed was the family that was seconded to me as a fourth year medical student to act as a GP for the subsequent three years. Cyril taught me um, how to care. He taught me um, a great deal of knowledge around both oncology and hemophilia. Uh, he taught me to have a certain strength which is required by the medical profession to actually look after patients who are either chronically ill, as the haemophilia patients are, or who are going to be lost. How to, how to care for the patients, how to, how to be part of a family, how to be part of, of the mums and dads who are going to lose their children. Um, he taught me to go to the funerals of patients who died, which is something I've done throughout my medical career whenever I have been able to, although I've lived in Johannesburg for the last 34 years. I, I just actually, I'm just stunned um, that Cyril should be sitting there um, in absolute agony and, and we just actually are not doing enough. That's my personal opinion and I, I'd like to thank Cyril for making me uh, a great deal of what I turned out to be as a physician over many years. My name is Glenn Stavridis. I'm hemophiliac and we heard about this, uh, my mother and my brother and I heard about this uh, doctor who was treating patients differently. So we upped and off and went off to Red Cross Hospital and uh, sort of treated uh, my brother and I, uh, as an outpatient, and changed our lives completely. Um, the first thing that happened is we started getting treatment in the morning before going to school and then coming back 12 hours later for the follow-up treatment instead of going to hospital for, 
for five days. Um, the difference is immense. It started to prevent the damages that were taking place. All under Cyril's uh, innovative policies and approaches. That change it completely changed my life. Um, I was able to start playing sport and it really is a travesty of justice to find himself in this circumstance. I would like to add to what one or two people have said. Can we as the people here become a starting point for doing something about it? His patients, their parents, their friends, their family. What I would really like to see, and I was really hoping it would be really soon, that we'd all be at the airport to welcome, welcome him back. Uh, Michael and I have been talking to the media, the Department of Foreign Affairs, and obviously the lawyers there. I think that the end is in sight in, the t in, in terms of just running out of excuses to keep Cyril uh, in Abu Dhabi any longer. It's Deborah, Michael and Sarah, Erebus. Because he spent so much time with all of you, <laughs> we didn't get to spend much time with him. <laughs> um, I remember we used to wake up for school pretty early, hop at six, seven o'clock, and Dad was already at G1. Um, and bedtime was quarter to eight, eight o'clock, at the latest, if you were lucky. Um, and he may have been home by then. Weekends, of course, were a different story. He used to take us down um, pretty much every Saturday um, to G1. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, a treat for us was, to, was being allowed to take a tongue depressor home or a syringe. <laughs> yeah, and included us in his life and, and his work and this family. Thank you all for being here Thank and for sharing your stories. Thanks again, everybody. It's been great. And I also I hope to make new friends from all of this. Thank you very much. Thank you.